then uh, thank you i wish we are recording this so that the people who will not be able to join can uh, follow the the proceedings yeah so from 1st october we will open the window for the submission of the of the of the, of the different entries so people will have 20 days to submit uh, their various uh, submissions and um, the deadline for that will be on 20th october so the 20th of october is the deadline when people should uh, should uh, submit their um, their various uh, entries then hopefully uh, the winner will be announced in um, 20 on 22nd november that is during uh, RCMRD's conference of minister that will be held in uh, Kampala, Uganda uh, later in the year. So currently we have 24 countries that will be participating in this um, competition. So the countries are from um, up north, from Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, we have Rwanda, we have Tanzania, we have Zambia, Angola, Namibia, Botswana, Iswatini, uh, Lesotho, Madagascar, Mauritius, Comoros, Seychelles, Zimbabwe, as well as Malawi and uh, Mozambique. So those are the 24 countries that uh, will be participating in this uh, competition. And again, the objective is to really to promote the use of earth observation and to see how do we create an awareness to the some of the data sharing geoportals and observatories that we have in our region. Uh, there is quite a lot of uh, data sets that are available, and I uh, would want to see how do people creatively use this information to develop uh, innovative uh, solutions. So the competition, I should emphasize that it is not a competition for geographers or um, GIS people. It's really for people who have a passion for creating maps. And um, in, the, in the four month window that we shall be having for the competition, we'll be sharing with you ways and means in which you can create different products based on the data sets that uh, we shall have availed. So anyone who is passionate about creating maps is definitely welcome to participate in this uh, competition. Uh, in terms of the award prizes, we have uh, four award prizes. We have four award prizes. So the first category is on uh, forestry and uh, protected areas as well as wildlife. So the total price tag there is 2000 euros. That is the first uh, category. Then we have a category for marine, oceans, as well as coastal information. Uh, that is actually, it caters for countries which are um, under the Indian Ocean region, as well as the ones which are uh, bordering or uh, they have a border with the, with the ocean. Um, so the price tag there again is 2,000 euros. Then uh, we do have uh, a category for land degradation, wetlands and conservation that is uh, going to have also a price tag of 2,000 uh, euros. Then um, we shall have a People's Choice uh, Award, uh, which is the overall winner uh, that will be made up of, uh, that will have about 4,000 euros. And uh, the winner will be voted by people based on the five best entries that uh, will be identified by the judges. Uh, let me repeat that. So the judges will identify, um, the judges will identify five best entries and then uh, we'll open a poll. We'll open a poll where people will vote for the best uh, for the best entry, and the five best entries will get a chance to present their work uh, to the various uh, to, 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 to online uh, partic to online uh, participants or the audience. And uh, in doing so, uh, people will be able to vote, and uh, they will decide which one uh, will take the overall winner for RCMRD's Map Competition 2022 edition. Um, additionally to those four prizes that I've mentioned, uh, all the four winners will receive a one-year ESRI ArcGIS uh, license that uh, they can use and uh, they can take advantage of. Um, in terms of the, uh, the criteria for identifying the winning, uh, the winning entries, we have identified about five of them. Uh, we'll not go into details, but I'll just mention them in brief. So we are looking at um, the first criteria is that it has to be map centric. It's a map competition. So we definitely need to have a map and that map can be perhaps be highlighting a specific topic or creating an awareness of a specific problem or it's trying to provide a solution to a specific thing that uh, is challenging people. So that is the first um, uh, criteria. Then the other criteria is on the design layout. Uh, there has to be a good flow of the map in terms of the text, in terms of the graphics, 
in terms of the figures or tables that you'll be having. It has to, the, the layout has to be nice. Then uh, the map has to be visually appealing in terms of the colors that you use, in terms of the grammar, the punctuation, uh, the use of symbology. So we would also want very nice and appealing uh, maps. Then uh, we also would want the map to communicate uh, effectively. So the product that you submit has to have effective communication in terms of clearly outlining uh, what exactly are you, uh, uh, are you trying to, to, to indicate in the entry that you have submitted. It has to be creative, it has to be original, and it has to be presented in a nice manner. Then the last criteria is that it has to demonstrate uh, effective use of uh, geographical information in terms of the data sets that uh, will uh, be shared. And uh, actually uh, the map that you create or the product that you create, it has to have at least two data sources from the, from the data sets that uh, we have listed in the next section. So that is the criteria that we shall use uh, for, the, for, the, for the judging. Um, just to give people an idea of some of the data sources or data sets that are available, we have put links where you can get information from. Uh, they include um, the RCMRD Open Data Portal, we have the Protected Planet, we have the Ocean Data Viewer, we have the Africa Geo Portal, we have the Officer Geo Portal that deals with forestry, we also have the GMS and Africa Geo Portal that has a lot of information. So what we'll require is that all submitted entries must use at least two of those two data sets. And uh, if you have any other data sets from other data sources, uh, you are also welcome to share that. So this will also be uh, communicated towards the deadline of uh, the submission uh, in terms of um, how do you indicate uh, which data sets you are using. So that will be communicated uh, much, much, much later. So in terms of the submission formats, uh, we are looking at four ways in which um, we can have um, the submissions. The first format is through a web map. Uh, so you can submit your entry in form of a web map. So the web map can be a combination of several data sets that you have put uh, and it's addressing a specific theme. The other category that will also allow submission is through a story map. So if you are having a, a story map and uh, you want to communicate using it, uh, that is going to be allowed. Then you can also submit using a data dashboard. So a data dashboard um, is, is also very uh, interesting. And then also the fourth category is through a map application. So all these four categories, we will have uh, specific uh, webinars and schedules that uh, we will uh, highlight. What do we mean when we say a web map, a story map, a data dashboard, or a map application? And the dates uh, that we shall be having these webinars or, um, or, or, uh, or sensitizations are indicated in the website. One of them is on 24th, 24th of August, actually this month. Then we shall have another one on 14th September and another one on 28th September. So these will be technical uh, sessions where we'll highlight how do you come up with various, uh, some of these various uh, submission formats and how do you go uh, about that. Um, the platform that we shall be using for the map competition is uh, ArcGIS, on, uh, ArcGIS um, uh, Online, and uh, we shall be using the Africa Geo Portal. So you will be required to sign up and uh, use that particular account in this particular competition. So even if you do not win in the competition, you get the advantage of having a license that uh, you can utilize uh, when you are working with it. Um, so also to appreciate the participating projects and the partners who are behind this initiative, uh, specifically the three projects that have um, spearheaded this map competition. We have Biopama, uh, that is Biodiversity and Protected Area Management. We also have the GMS and Africa uh, that is supported by the African Union Commission. We also have the OFESA project that is supported by the EU as well as the Center for International uh, Forest Research. So that is really a quick and a small overview of uh, the map competition. Uh, we'll definitely get sessions and, um, and other upcoming events where we can get into more details uh, in terms of the formats of submission, in terms of uh, what we are required to share. Um, but uh, for now, I would want to stop there. And um, I would like us to go to the next uh, agenda item that looks at the uh, some of the remarks uh, from the participating institutions. 
and uh, we will hear from um, we'll hear from uh, from uh, from RCMRD uh, first. Uh, DG RCMRD, you can share with us some uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, uh, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I guess none of us is in the night on the continent uh, to everybody who's attending. Uh, welcome uh, to this webinar. Uh, I really wish to appreciate uh, you taking the time to come and join. Uh, I should first of all congratulate Ngugi and team uh, for coming up with this uh, innovative idea of holding a map competition uh, across the 24 countries that have been uh, listed uh, and uh, mentioned by, by Ngugi. As you know, RSMLD, uh, our motto is mapping for sustainable development. So we live by mapping. Mapping is our mission and it's our work. So having a competition of this nature and uh, being able to draw in like-minded institutions uh, like AUC, uh, EU, C4, ESRI, and others is much appreciated. So as far as we are concerned, we want to use this opportunity through you, the people who are going to be in this competition, to really promote and the awareness and make people understand the power of a map. You know, virtually everything we do, it starts from knowing where it is uh, before you can be able to undertake any planning or any activity on it. So this competition that cuts across a number of programs that are supported by different partners is an excellent opportunity. So I can only encourage uh, all the people with the creative ideas following the guidelines provided by Ngugi uh, to really come forth. This is just a start. And we want to assure you that uh, there'll be more initiatives of the same, the same kind, uh, given the kind of uh, response we are getting from you. So uh, let me encourage you, we will continue supporting every program that promotes uh, the mapping uh, of our resources. Uh, so finally, uh, let me thank once again, uh, our partners, EU specifically, who cut across a number of our programs, whether it's the officer project, whether it's the Biopharma, they're involved at providing the resources that we are using to do interesting things in the different uh, project beneficiary countries. Let me also uh, thank our partners from IUCN, uh, JRC, who are the technical level, our partners on these EU funded projects. C4 has been our partner on forest uh, resource mapping for a number of years. So we wish to appreciate that you are together with us uh, in this very program for promoting the products we get uh, from, from our work because we invest a lot of uh, energy, we invest a lot, a lot of resources in developing these products. But unless these products are utilized uh, by our countries, by our people, then they remain really uh, pure academic exercises. So this is part of the awareness creation, dissemination, so that people really uh, demystify the map and they can be able to utilize it for different activities. So I uh, wish to encourage everybody uh, I haven't mentioned the WCMC, who are also partners in the Biopharma project. Uh, I also wish to thank you for, for being partners in this undertaking. So I really didn't have anything specific apart from telling you that you are the mapping people. This is our competition. Let us draw in as many people as possible and make sure we promote the power that the map uh, still provides in terms of understanding our resources and how best we can plan for them. RCMLD will set up for that and will always be there to support initiatives of this nature. So with those words, I wish to encourage everybody. It's going to be clear, transparent process. And I hope the best map, uh, the, the, the winner, as, is, as I said, will be announced in uh, Kampala. Every two years, the ministers in charge of mapping in our 20 member states meet together with permanent secretaries and heads of mapping agencies. This time is going to be in Kampala. It's a grand occasion at which the winner of this competition is going to be announced. And I hope to be an inspiration to our ministers, the political heads, to go and take seriously the work that comes from the mapping exercises we're gonna take. So thank you very much. Once again, our partners uh, and those representing them on this platform. Uh, I wish to end my remarks there 
and wish everybody the best of luck as we enter the competition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DG RCMRD. Uh, we'll hear from um, the Director General of uh, Center for International Forest Research, CIFO. Over to you, Robert. Uh, thank you, Ngovi. I think it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to, to see uh, uh, this competition be because we have many existing data platform and, 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 and observatory, but they need to learn and they, from each other and, and, and they need to, to be used in, in synergy. <clears throat> OFESA, for example, is, is currently collaborating with, with Biopama uh, to the Regional Resource Hub, uh, is hosted by the RCMRD. We have identified various areas of collaboration, capacity building, technical interoperability. But the, the question is that if, if people are not using this, it is not very useful. So for the observatory to be of any value, they, they need to be used. And, and hence, we need to create uh, an awareness of these things exist and, and, and make this available uh, repository uh, accessible to, to the different user. And, and it is very interesting to see this uh, map competition because it, it, it creates a wider awareness. It, it creates a group of people uh, uh, that have used. It will uh, hopefully generate some ideas and feedback for us in terms of how can we improve, uh, how can we uh, make our collaboration better, how can we make our platform more accessible, how can we provide better data or better information. And, and so I think it, it, it's very important and uh, if we want data to inform decision making, uh, we need platform uh, that are accessible to the decision maker and, and we need people that use this platform to translate this data in terms of uh, decision making uh, uh, documents and, 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 and because decision makers don't necessarily read very long document, but maps uh, can say a lot of things in, in a very short document. So um, I think to, to paraphrase the, the Baron de Coubertin, it's like for the Olympic Games. And what is important is to participate more than to win. And so good luck to everybody and looking forward for the result of the competition. Back to you. Louis. Thank you very much, uh, Robert, uh, for the for, for those remarks. I uh, will hear from uh, international. Uh, I mean, from Christine Menzel from the International Union for Conservation of Nature, that is IUCN. She's also part of the Biopama uh, project that is supporting this uh, initiative. Over to you, Christine. Thanks, Ngugi. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a great honor to be with you this morning, and we in Biopama and also as IUCN are very excited about um, this map competition. Even though IUCN's sort of role is really working more in convening and um, on the policy level, as you know, the Biopalma project is, is um, intended to make the link in particular between knowledge and action. And so from that perspective, we've been working with RCMRD in setting up the observatory for protected and conserved areas. And the way IUCN uh, uses these products is exactly um, as was referred to by both of the previous speakers as well, to really try and visualize for decision makers uh, what is happening, what's changing, what progress is made um, on the ground and to enable and inform discussions. So as you may know, Biopalmer's tagline is also from knowledge to action. And that is exactly what uh, we, are looking to this kind of competition and the kind of work that um, all of you that work in mapping and producing story maps and, and uh, important knowledge products um, that visualize changes, um, we look to you to produce um, effective uh, tools that we can use at the, at the decision-making level and to help decision-makers to uh, un better understand what they're looking at. So we're very excited about this, and we do um, hope to see many very interesting products that um, one, of course, are part of the competition, but also that we will be able to use going forward in the work that we do. And so for us in particular, we're obviously looking at protected areas in particular, protected and conserved areas in particular, um, looking at 
progress we're making towards global biodiversity goals on this. And anything that can help us to visualize this is really useful uh, for us. So I'm going to leave it at that with a little bit of inspiration as to focus uh, for your for your maps and products that you're going to be submitting and look forward to seeing what comes out of it. Thank you very much, Ngugi. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Christine, for that. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, we'll also hear from, uh, from uh, one of the other partners we have in Biopharma, uh, that is from the European Union uh, Joint, Research, Joint Research Center. Uh, over to you, Steve. Good morning. Thank you, Ngugi. Hi, everybody. And uh, it's a real honor to and a pleasure to uh, be part of this uh, launch of this map competition. Uh, I hope I'm meeting one of the criteria for the competition being map centric today. I've got a, I'm even wearing a map uh, in, uh, in honor of the occasion. Um, I'd like to thank RCMRD and all the partners uh, involved uh, in launching this. I think as others have said, by having this objective of producing a map, it's gonna bring us together and really look at using and interacting across all these different sources of information in the portals and resources that have been mentioned. Because we work on Biopharma, which is biodiversity in protected areas, we're delighted uh, that conservation and protected areas are amongst the themes. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing some excellent examples which use the outputs of some of the projects that we're working on and supporting from the Joint Research Center in the region. So perhaps as a cartographer myself, uh, as, a, as a GIS person, although GIS, as we've heard, is not the main objective, it's not meant to be so technical, this competition. It's about using the, the creativity uh, that we all have and, and it, trying to uh, communicate that through a map. And perhaps just some advice from my side or some thoughts about how to go about this. The first thing is to really think about what it is you want to say with the map. Come up with something compelling and then build a map around that. Be, be concise, you know, less is more. Uh, avoid the temptation to put lots of data. Try and keep it simple, but be creative as well uh, in the process. And, and that's not a technical skill. That's something where, regardless of the technology, creativity will always shine through. Take inspiration. There are many, many resources online uh, in printed form. So don't be afraid to take from previous work, but also be, be original. And if I may, I mean, I was feeling very mappy today. So uh, I've been looking through some of the examples we have, like this atlas that we produced on global surface water at JRC. There are many, many of these things. And, and I've got this fantastic book on cartography as well that I'd like to dip into to give me some ideas. So there's lots of material online to, to help you and to guide you through this process. Most importantly, of course, all the data. So there are no excuses about not having access to data, all those wonderful open data sources with RCMRD uh, at the core. So if it's Earth observation, you have all the Copernicus imagery and derived data. You have open street map and you have that conduit through RCMRD to all the regional data that are available. So just remember that uh, although we're talking about dashboards and story maps, at the heart of that, a map, a good map, can tell a really good story on its own. So I wish you good luck in coming up with those ideas. Again, I think it's a fantastic initiative. I'm very excited about it and looking forward to seeing the results. So all the best, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Steve. And uh, thank you for those tips. And uh, I definitely your chat can be, is map centric. I'm not so sure if, it's, uh, if it qualifies to be in one of the submission formats, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much for that. So uh, we'll hear from uh, Meshak Kenywa. He represents the African Union Commission. Uh, they are supporting the MAP initiative, uh, MAP competition initiative through the GMS and Africa project. Uh, over to you, Meshak. Thank you, Guge, and my regards to all the previous speakers. I just want to start by congratulating all the participants today and uh, telling them that the first process of winning is by participating. So congratulations in advance. Um, well, to Asia Madi, thank you so much for inviting us to this occasion. I just want to quickly have a look up of why we are uh, participating in this event today. Uh, as you know, AUC has developed what we call the African Space Strategy and the policy that, that are guiding instruments for the uh, African Outer Space Program. And they are focusing on four main domains. One is satellite communication. The second one is Earth observation, which is the subject matter of this day. And then we have um, navigation and positioning. We also have astronomy and space sciences. 
And uh, subsequently, we have formed the African Space Agency as the implementing institution for this uh, strategy. And uh, in the EO domain, currently, uh, African Union Commission is leading the global monitoring for the environment and security in Africa, which is GMES in Africa, one of the partners in this project. And uh, we have done with the first phase, and the second phase is ongoing. And I'm happy to say that RCMRD is uh, leading in both phases uh, as one of the eight consortia that have been selected by African Union Commission with partnership from JRC, European Union, um, uh, European Space Agency, among others. Uh, GMS in Africa is actually a um, joint project or a joint program between African Union Commission and European Union. Uh, addressing earth observation applications in uh, marine and uh, marine and coastal areas applications, as well as water natural resources management. Now, um, the, as you know, we have also what we call the Agenda 2063, which African space strategy is addressing, and uh, we have been emphasizing on user-centric uh, services in GMS and Africa and in the space program. And this is why um, this important occasion uh, becomes core of what we are doing, uh, because we are looking from the user perspective and not generally from the technology point of view. We are not, uh, in, another, in other words, we are not pushing the technology, but we are uh, addressing the real needs that the users have. Now, 15 applications have been uh, operationalized through GMS and Africa Phase 1, uh, over 15 to be precise. And um, all the applications that are being, uh, you know, addressed in this particular map competition actually are integral to the GMS and Africa program. Uh, RCMRD, as I said, is leading one of the eight consortia in this process. And uh, the competition we are supporting because um, we have four main pillars. We are six main pillars, but I think uh, what is convenient for this map competition, uh, about four of them. I see that uh, Googie has uh, emphasized on the map centric, which is actually the data itself and, and infusion of that data to produce services that can speak to the users. Uh, we also have um, what we call the service development, which actually can be addressed by the same map. And we also have the uh, what we call the communication and raising awareness. In, in other words, to bring all the community of users together and also to make sure that the users are utilizing this data. I just want to echo the speaker from JRC who said that if we produce massive amount of data and it's not being used by anyone, then it becomes useless. Uh, but the core thing in this uh, competition is to ensure that we have um, we have usage of this information, and that is why effective communication as one of the criteria that Gogi mentioned is actually making more sense to us in GMS in Africa. Uh, one thing that we have been emphasizing is that uh, we should start from the end and then come to the beginning, as we always do in many uh, space projects. In other words, you start with the users and asking yourself what particular problem or challenge are you addressing? And then you form around that at the core of it and, and, and you come up with what kind of data sets you need, what kind of maps you need to produce, what kind of products and services you need to produce from the same. Um, so I just want to appreciate uh, RCMRD, the DG, we want to congratulate you from the African Union Commission, uh, Gugi and your team and all the partners involved in this project. We want to congratulate you uh, for bringing again this community of, of uh, mappers together. And I believe this will be one of the starting points to ensure that we have a community of practice on how uh, we form services or we form products in the future. And I believe that um, all the data sets that have been provided on the website that I have seen, including the GMS and Africa web portal or the, um, the geo portal, and also you know, other, other geo portals that RCMRD has provided, it's, it's good enough to kickstart the competition and to ensure that we work as teams. Oh, well, one other thing that we emphasize is always to work in cohesion. Um, as you are competing, just uh, ensure that you're also part of teams and, and uh, you add value to one another and make sure that the data that we are providing is, is actually transformed into useful services and useful maps that can be easily interpreted and reusable. I want to thank you and to congratulate all of you and I submit Googie. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Meshak from the AUC Commission uh, for those uh, nice inspirational comments. Uh, we'll hear from Lorraine, uh, she, she's from Esri, one of the long standing uh, partners that RCMRD has and uh, not just RCMRD, but the other participating institution as well. Over to you, Lorraine. 
Hi, Ngogi, thank you very much. Uh, I just have a couple of slides I wanted to share um, just, just to get us going because I'm, I'm a visual person. I really like to have uh, visuals as part of what we're doing. Um, so thank you very much for um, inviting us today and being part of this fantastic presentation. Uh, my name is Lauren Innes. I'm Business Development Manager for ESRI. And it's really an honor to be part of this initiative. Um, together with all these great partners that we have here in the room. Just bear, bear with me one moment while I share my screen. Don't want to take too much time away from everybody today. Um, so really excited about this map competition and, and what it will bring and what all of you will be uh, providing here uh, during the next few months. Uh, it's also really great to hear about the really large, large number of participants that we have already. And I'm, I'm expecting there's many more that will sign up in the next few weeks as well. Um, so conserving lands and managing biodiversity and maintaining biodiversity is increasingly more difficult, as we all know, even more so if we take into account the, uh, the climate change and the effects of climate change on what we're already doing and trying to do. So we really strongly feel that mapping, analyzing and understanding these ecolo ecological challenges is becoming increasingly more crucial. So we at ESRI really strongly believe that the ge geographic approach can help us with these solving these challenges. And a geographic approach is really a, a way of thinking and problem solving that integrates uh, geographic science and information into how we manage and understand the planet. And, and most of you are actually already doing this, right? Creating maps, looking at data, uh, et cetera. And GIS really enables that geographic approach and helps us with collecting the field observations, organizing and managing data, visualizing and analyzing data. And, and although we provide data sources as part of this uh, mapping competition, you know, you are also free to go out and collect your own information as well and, and bring that to the table. And I think that's very much encouraged. Um, so also monitoring and modeling the current state, what we're doing right now with, with GIS technology and in general on these platforms. But we're also using these platforms and the data to look back at the past, to learn from the past, but also to forward and, and model the future uh, through modeling and forecasting. But ultimately, what we're all trying to do here uh, during this map competition is to create actionable information that can help us uh, with decision making and trying to foster this collaboration collaboration between all these entities that is really required um, between all of us to come up uh, and solve these challenges that we're facing today. Um, but the most powerful tool actually that we have is, is you, you as the powerful community of conservationists. Um, you that can provide us with these shared, shared actionable information products in the forms of data sets, web maps, apps, and story maps that can really help us uh, tackle these ecological challenges that we're, that we're facing today. Um, so really looking forward to hearing what you can and, and seeing what you can provide during this mapping competition, utilizing all the tools and all the data sources that are and, and have been made available through the various portals that uh, we'll get on later on in this conversation. So from us at ESRI, we wish you all happy mapping and, and we really look forward to what you will be uh, producing. Thank you very much, Ngugi. Yeah, thank you very much, Lorraine, for that. And uh, also for sure, uh, overview of uh, the map competition. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, we'll hear from one of the other partners that we work closely under Biopharma. Uh, that is the World Conservation Monitoring Center. We have Jasmine. Uh, please, over to you, Jasmine. Thanks, Ngudi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very delighted to be here with you all today and to see so many people online and many familiar names as well. So that's really exciting. Um, and to be here for the launch of this very exciting uh, competition. So, yes, my name is Jasmine Upton and I work on the Protected Planet Initiative uh, at the UN Environment uh, Programme World Conservation Monitoring Centre. So we're one of the sources that um, are available to be used in this competition. But I, yeah, I absolutely echo the words of my fan fellow uh, panelists. Not only will this competition help to raise awareness of the huge breadth of um, useful data sets and platforms that are available to support conservation and decision-making, but it will also demonstrate just how valuable and informative um, data and geospatial data can be when it's brought together. Um, so 
through the Protected Planet website, which is linked on the map competition page, you'll be able to access and download um, spatial data on the world's protected and conserved areas. This uh, data was, is collected from hundreds of data providers across the world, including governments, NGOs, and communities. And uh, we work to collect it with, with um, the support of the Biopharma program. So with the support of RCMRD and all Biopharma partners uh, through its regional resource hub. And for us, data on protected and conserved areas really comes alive when it's communicated through maps. When, when you overlay protected and conserved area data with other aspects of biodiversity, you can see uh, the benefits that protected and conserved areas are providing. But also when you look at it on a, a bigger scale, on a regional scale, you can see um, how, how well we're doing, how well connected it is, how well it's protecting biodiversity, ecosystem services, all of this, all of these various um, elements. But yeah, so I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the competition entries. Um, good luck to everybody who's uh, who's participating. Um, and then from all of the Protected Planet team, we'd like to thank our partners and our friends at RCMRD and all of the partners involved in this competition for uh, the coordination and hard work in setting it up and give our thanks for including the Protected Planet initiative. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jasmine, for that. Uh, the, the last speaker was uh, a representative from the European Union uh, Kenya delegation uh, called uh, person, a person called Thomas. Unfortunately, he's having technical challenges. Uh, if he joins, uh, we'll give him some few minutes to share some uh, remarks as well. Uh, but we'll switch gears to um, the second, uh, I mean, the third part of the agenda, where we'll hear from um, Pauline, and uh, she'll be talking about the Africa Geoportal, which is really the platform that we shall be using uh, for submitting the various entries uh, for the map competition. Over to you, Pauline. Thank you, Ngogi. Um, hi, everyone. So I'll just share my screen so that we could um, start the walkthrough. Please confirm if you could see my screen, Ngogi. Yes, uh, we can see. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, as Ngugi mentioned, um, Esri will be providing the platform that will be used for participation in the mapping competition. And just starting from the competition page, um, I'd like to cover some of the data sources that Ngugi had mentioned, uh, that's mainly uh, pegged on Africa Geoportal, as well as submission formats. And I know um, some of you have already gotten the chance to go through it. So if you, haven't gotten the chance, please just go ahead and, and, and start going through it. And one of the things that should be required if you don't already have an account on Africa Geoportal is to sign up for an account. So if you click here from the competition page, which will be shared, you may be required to enter some information to create your account. So it's a very easy account to create. And again, it's at no cost. It's a resource that's available for everyone who will be participating in the conference as well as in, I mean, sorry, in the competition as well as any other person who would like to make use of content available for Africa. So you can put in your details as well as use your social media accounts to be able to create an account for um, Africa Geoportal. So just to start, Africa Geoportal is a platform that combines many functions of providing access to data on Africa, providing access to tools that allow you to interact with this data, that's uh, the aspect of visualization, analysis, and sharing out information as information products. And finally, we also provide learning resources that can help you uh, learn how to make use of the spatial data and how to make use of the tools uh, to be able to unearth underlying information on this data. And one of the ways that we are able to support a number of communities across Africa is through events such as this one. So getting to Africa Geoportal is just by going to africageoportal.com and from there you can access content that's available in traditional geospatial formats. So we've been able to work with a number of agencies from different countries to have country-specific portals which you can explore uh, when you have time, as well as work with a number of partners who I'm glad to see a number of them are also part of this competition. And these partners have provided access to content, such as um, imagery through our partnership with organizations such as Digital Earth Africa, 
uh, data specifically on demographic information such as grid three. And uh, um, I saw that Steve had mentioned African knowledge platform who is um, who have been able to uh, create a lot of content around Africa and we've just linked uh, to the knowledge platform. So just looking at RCMRD um, as the main host for this particular competition, uh, we can just try to explore this particular site within Africa Geoportal, but you can also explore all the other sites as I've mentioned. So if you click on that link on RCMRD, you'll be uh, navigated to the sub-site within Africa Geoportal for RCMRD. And from there, definitely you can see information on the competition, but you can see all these other data sets that they have. So from this platform, you're able to search for data, either through the search bar here, or you can come and explore your data from, or any other data from the global navigation menu here. So for example, if I was to search for data, and maybe looking at biodiversity, the result I get will be from this page where, which can allow me to be able to explore this information uh, and see if it's for fit for use for the kind of thing I'm interested in. So for example, looking at something that you'd be interested in for the competition, you can try to explore this information just to filter the results by date, or you can also filter this information by category. So if you're just mainly looking at environmental data, we can see this information that has been filtered based on that. So for example, I'd be interested in looking at the forest type for uh, Kenya, uh, looking at this particular data set. So again, if I click on this, it launches a page which allows me to further look at this data. So this is very map centric in that we are using the map as our main interface for interaction with this spatial data. So you can click on a particular section or a particular feature and you get more details about it on the pop-up. But beyond that, you're also able to look at the uh, table if that's something of interest just to get a general understanding of the data set. You're able to filter the data in case you only want something that fits a particular criteria, you can be able to do that. So for example, if I'm looking at a particular forest type, then I'd be interested in natural forest. If I click on that, you can see it's very responsive on the map and it filters out all the other information that may not be necessary. If I'm interested, for example, again, just on plantation forest, you can see that would be uh, filtered out and so on. Beyond that, um, in case you're interested in having this data accessible in another platform, then you'd be able to download this information, either as the total data set or just the filtered information. And you can download it in various formats based on the platform that you'd like to use to probably further explore and analyze this information. But the best part with Africa Geoportal as being the platform that you'd use for the competition as well as building your capacity is you'd be able to create a map directly from here, create a story map, which is one of the submission platforms or use it in any other way. So for example, if I opted the, to use it in Access Online, which is the back end with the mapping tools tied to Africa Geoportal, I'd be able to load this same data set within a map. So the map is the canvas that you'd be able to use to add your data, be able to change the style of this information. For example, if I just want to see quickly how this information looks like based on the different categories, I'd be able to see that so you can see where the natural forest is, where the plantations are, bamboo, and so on. But beyond that, Still on the map making aspect, I can be able to choose a base map that would be well suited to highlight my information or provide the relevant context to what I'm trying to show on the map, as well as do any analysis to, um, as well as do any analysis that would enrich the information on display and so on. So for example, if I'm interested in creating buffers, maybe to see what would be the zones for enhanced protection of some of these areas, then I'll be able to run analysis tools on Africa Geoportal to create the buffers and so on. So as a user on Africa Geoportal, other than being able to create the map, you have access to the tools or the submission formats that Ngugi had mentioned. So you can have the story maps, you can build dashboards, and you can use other app templates that we have to be able to create your final output for submission for the competition. Some of the questions we've seen being highlighted or are you able to add your own data in case you might not have the relevant or the required data already within uh, some of the data sources we uh, mentioned? 
Yes, you can. So we've also provided you with a way to manage your content from Africa Geo Portal, where you can add your own data set, meeting various formats. So it could be a data layer, or it could be something in imagery format, or it could be something in 3D format. So you'll be able to add that information. But still from here, you're able to access data also from other sources and so on, including the Living Atlas, which is also an additional source of data. So just again, I like the, what uh, Steve then had suggested in terms of also taking advantage of what has already been done. So I would recommend as a starting point before we actually get to more engagement, as, as Gudi had mentioned, we'll have um, webinars which you can show you how to do some of these things. So you can already start exploring some of the um, uh, resources or galleries of work that people have done. So for example, for story maps, you could have a look at the gallery and you can filter this information maybe by nature and physical science and you can already start having a look at how people have been able to use story maps to provide, uh, to create or to give a narrative on a conservation story. So an example is this one on wetlands of the world, whereby if we see, we, we get that story for different wetlands and so on. And they've basically used a web scene to be able to navigate to different parts of the world to explore how the wetlands look like and what could be a, a major threat to some of these wetlands and so on. So that's an example of a tool you could use. You could use a dashboard. And again, if you go to the gallery, you'll be able to access some of this information. Again, you filter by um, um, topic and you can see some information based on that. So an example of a dashboard is this one on biodiversity indicators uh, within an urban population. And you can see that it's quite interactive in that if I click on a particular indicator level, you can see which areas actually are on that level and what would be this information are based on different kinds of uh, vegetation and so on. And finally, an example is Experience Builder, which again is also a submission format that is being used for the competition, which you can take advantage of. And one of the um, amazing um, outputs from this is an example of um, um, an app which looks at different indicators across the world, which could also be a source of information. So for example, if you're looking at conservation indicators globally, you can see it's using a uh, data source from one of our partners uh, for this competition. You're able to get information on conservation. And here we just have a very basic, but again, very intuitive or very informative map on the different protected areas across Africa. And you can see where there's a concentration, where maybe probably there needs to be enhanced protection and so on. Finally, again, this is something we will cover during um, our interaction. We have learning resources available, which can help you to start out uh, learning how to create maps. Um, and, and we have this information available based on your level of comfort with making maps. So if you're very new to this, we have uh, lessons that will be uh, available to you. But you also, if you want to apply a bit of analysis, you also have lessons uh, tied to that. And you'll see some of these lessons are as short as 20 minutes, which can give you the starting point to how can you start making maps and how can you um, start working on your submission for the competition. So thank you. I look forward to interacting with all of you, uh, all the registered uh, participants uh, during the webinars and, and any other opportunity we can to help you um, um, prepare a wonderful map for a submission. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pauline, for that uh, overview of the Africa Geo Portal platform, as well as the various submission formats that uh, we shall be uh, looking at uh, from the web maps, story maps, the data dashboards, as well as the map applications. Uh, as I had indicated earlier, we will have technical sessions uh, where we'll go a bit in depth into all those four submission formats. And the first technical session will be on the 24th of August uh, this month. Uh, so we will communicate with you on how you can uh, participate in that technical session. So, and uh, remember the whole idea here is that uh, you do not have to be a geographer to participate in the, in the map competition. You just really need to have a passion of, uh, of creating and uh, utilizing maps. 
and uh, we'll share with you some of the ways in which you can uh, participate in that. So the last uh, presentation will come from my colleague, David. Uh, David will talk about the Geo, uh, Geo Innovation Hub. We call it the Geo Hub and uh, how uh, it, can, uh, it can support uh, the various uh, entries that um, will, 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 will be outstanding. And uh, you know, how, we, how can we take up some of the ideas that uh, we'll have identified that um, they, they need to be supported uh, by not just um, within the competition, but perhaps beyond the competition. Um, over to you, David. Thank you so much, Ngugi, and thank you for this uh, brilliant idea of bringing uh, uh, quite a number of people across the, the, the globe to talk about ways in which we can be able to use uh, uh, some of the data that we have uh, in order to solve some of the problems that are currently facing the, the, the country and the, um, uh, the, and, uh, and the world. So I'll just like to give a brief um, overview of what GeoHub is all about in relation to uh, this particular item that we'd like to tackle. Back in 2020, through the Director General, we launched a GeoHub Africa. And over time, we've been looking for best ways in which we can bring in ideas in order to incubate them into, into fruition. And this seems like a very good launch where this particular platform or this particular space will have an opportunity to showcase some of the ideas that are coming out uh, across the world. So after that, we've been having, um, let me just give up just an, uh, some background. We have numerous problems. Currently, we've been having issues related to, to desert locusts. We are having issues related to, to drought. Currently, the Horn of Africa is probably experiencing the worst sort of drought. We've been having a few years rising lakes uh, along the Rift Valley and so many other problems. There are solutions to those particular problems, but they do not have a place where they can be grown, where they can be given an opportunity to be showcased to the world. Uh, so that led to the idea of having a geo hub. It's an innovation, incubation and mentorship space where people of variety from all walks of life can come in and be able to incubate some of the ideas that they have to make them be able to solve our societal problem. So over time, um, for, uh, ways we can bring in, and thank you so much again, Gugi, for bringing me up this particular opportunity, because we are going to have so many creative ideas from all over the, 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 the member states that we are currently working with under the Biopharma project. We are going to evaluate. And I like to say there is no bad idea or there is no any creative idea that will be trashed out. I like just to point out all the ideas whose, come, whose time has not come will be given an opportunity under a different sort of an angle where we'll, uh, we'll sit together with the, the innovator or the person who has come up with that particular idea to listen to what exactly they wanted to, to give out at that particular time. Then together we can be able to incubate them. We can mentor them to make sure that whatever they have reaches the desired market that they particular wanted. Um, just to solve problems that we're currently having. I'd like to point again uh, that, thank you again for bringing in the issue of a reward because rewards normally trigger our minds to think a little bit differently. And like what uh, the Apple, the Steve guy, the Apple owner said, anyone who thinks differently deserves to be rewarded. And I like to say your rewards will not only be now, probably some of the good ideas that will come will be able to solve so many other problems later in the future. I'll just like to add again uh, another place that we like to, uh, some of the other things that we like to be doing. We'll be having a, a course that is a Geo AI course, which is ready to be launched. I've just also communicated to my, uh, the, my director who is in charge of uh, capacity development to announce that particular course. It's related to Google Earth Engine and we are looking forward to expressing or showcasing some of the best ways in which we can use the Earth observation data to solve myriad of other problems that we have across. So please look out for uh, for this particular course in September, and we hope to launch it together with you as we uh, utilize some of the data sets. Probably it will give you more ideas on how to, to win the competition. Uh, hope to see the ripple effect of this particular competition, uh, spiraling to several other ways in which we can continue working together uh, into the future and making GeoHub and maybe some of these problems, uh, to solve some of these problems. 
Uh, Ngugi, I like to end it at this particular point, but uh, let me just mention again uh, at the incubation space, uh, uh, innovation space, the mentorship space, it's about utilizing the geo ideas to solve the society problems that we currently have. And this is a very good initiative that really falls within the GeoHub idea. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, very much, David. Uh, I think we are coming to the end of our online launch. Uh, we have definitely uh, heard from the various partners a uh, bit of uh, what the competition is all about and the platform that we shall be using. I would really would want to thank uh, everybody for attending. Uh, we'll not stop here. We'll definitely continue engaging. It's a four month competition. So we have just done the online launch today and we'll continue engaging. I would like to really give a special thanks to the Biopharma, GMS and Africa and OFESA projects for supporting this initiative. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that uh, we shall be having um, uh, the annual RCMRD International Conference uh, from 6th uh, to 8th of September. So in case uh, you are interested in uh, participating in this conference that will be held uh, physically at RCMRD, please uh, register and uh, you can come and uh, you network and learn from the various people that we have. Other than that, I would like us to uh, bring this uh, launch to an end. Thank you very much. And uh, we hope we'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. And uh, once again, thank you for attending. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Happy mapping, everybody. <laughs>